Hey guys, um, what's up? So, make sure there's something here, hold on. There we go. I just want to make sure there's something there. But I had somebody um, ask me through uh, one of the comments on my video uh, where I did a follow up on discussing uh, and talking about the upcoming Scooby Doo and the Th Curse of the 13th Ghost. A movie which is going to be a follow-up and continuation and conclusion to um, to the original 13 goes to Scooby-Doo now uh, one of the things that they asked me if I can check it out here let me see if I can pull it up here uh, for a second but one of the things they asked me to talk about was the uh, um, let's see. in mugs notifications I know it's around here somewhere hold on there we go I just have to mute something here for a second hold on. oh yeah this mr wrestling biggest fan mr. wrestling biggest fan asked me to give my give more detail on my theory about Daphne and Shaggy uh, about basically my theory on that Daphne and Shaggy might be an item and well here's the thing there's a lot of fans even myself that still think that Daphne and Shaggy are probably better for each other because you know there's an old saying of opposites tracked and apparently that's pretty true uh, in some cases um, but I think the real reason a lot of us look at it that way is because as a lot of people pointed out and even I've discussed this several times uh, just uh, go to just go to my channel go to search area that I put in Daphne Shaggy and you kind of see some of the videos I talked about on it um, but yeah even nowadays a lot of us a lot of fans including myself feel they're probably better for each other uh, the reason being is because like like I said opposites attract but mostly I think the real reason is you know a lot of fans today old and young fans that grew up with Scooby-Doo uh, fans that are growing up with Scooby-Doo um, uh, you know, have noticed that out of all the series, all the series that Scooby Doo did, or Scooby Scooby Doo had in the original run, in the original run, you had Scooby Doo Where Are You, New Scooby Doo Movies, and the Scooby Doo Show, and then. You had about a year or two or three, about, I would say two years actually, to where it was just Scooby, Shaggy, and Scrappy. And then came 1983 and Daphne returned. So you had all new Scooby Doo, all new Scooby Doo and Scrappy Doo show. You had new Scooby Doo mysteries and 13 Ghosts. So you kind of balanced it out when it came to uh, a whole team. But in a sense, what? But in a sense, what I'm trying to say here, I'm trying to make some sense here. <laughs> I know, I know. Don't don't joke about that, please. Uh, but what I'm trying to say here is, I think what made people accept Daphne even nowadays, because like I was trying to say, you have the so. You, I mean, today you have all of social media out there. And through YouTube and Daily Motion and streaming sites like Boomerang, and you know, and like I said, Netflix and Amazon and iTunes and Hulu, uh, you name it, you got all these outlets now to where younger fans that are currently growing up with Scooby Doo can go back and see some of the original cartoons, and just like us, the older fans that grew up with Scooby Doo will start to notice that for some odd reason the stories involving just Daphne, Shaggy, Scooby and Scrappy are more intriguing and more interesting 
than any of the adventures they had before from Scooby-Doo Where Are You to the Scooby-Doo Show. They basically find them more intriguing, more exciting, more more engaging, that's the word I'm looking for, than, than the other ones that came before, or, or even some that have happened recently. I think the closest anybody, anybody might say, excuse me, I think the closest anybody might say to a show being just as good as that run would be What's New Scooby-Doo and Mystery Incorporated. Those would be the only two shows in the past, what is it, 8, 16 years, past 15 to 16 years, fans would say were just as good and engaging, just as good and engaging as the... Uh, Daphne, Shaggy, Scrappy, and Scooby run from 1983 to about 1987. That, that's how good they were. I mean, true, some of the stories were 11 minute shorts, you know, tagged along some, t tagged alongside other 11 minute shorts. But those 11 minute shorts were good. I mean, even when they decided to go into a two part territory in the second season, and rechristened the show the new Scooby-Doo Mysteries, they were still good. They were still engaging. And what made them more interesting as well is you had episodes where they did bring Fred and Velma back. Sometimes they'd bring Fred and Velma back individually. Sometimes they'd bring them back together. Uh, examples of that is examples of that are the first two episodes of the second season, which was Happy Birthday Scooby-Doo, or Happy Birthday Scoob. They brought him back as part of the uh, birthday surprise for Scooby. They brought them back uh, in the Halloween episode, A Hassle at Dracula's Castle. They brought them back with, for the uh, ghost astronauts from outer space or something like that. I can't remember the title really. And then individually they would bring them back as well. They would bring them back like with Fred. He was brought back I think twice. He was brought back for the Nutcracker Scoob, which was a Christmas episode. And he was brought back for the episode they had in London based around Sherlock Jones or Sherlock Holmes. So he was brought back and Velma was only brought back on her own for a night louse in the White House or something like that. I think that's what the title was. So even with them coming back, the show was more engaging and interesting and fans just fell in love with it. But what has made the, but what has made the uh, theory relevant even today about there something being between, about there being, about there being something, excuse me for a second. That's better. Let me check my time. Okay, but like I said, um, even today, but like I was saying, it's those shows that took place between 83 to 87 that, like I said, with today's advent of streaming services and YouTube and Daily Motion and all that, that fans are able to go back and watch. What has developed the theory so much about Shaggy and Daphne probably being an item, even today, is the fact that they were treated as such in the eyes of a lot of fans back then. I mean, you had your choice of bringing back any of the three other members of Mystery Incorporated. You could have brought back Velma, which would have been great, which I think would have been a good choice. Fred, maybe. But they wanted somebody, but I think what they wanted with Daphne, but what they saw with Daphne, I think, and I've mentioned this before, is she was more like, at that time, more of a character that was uh, uh, receptive to being sort of like that hybrid of someone from the 80s and from the 60s, or from the 70s, if you will. Basically someone that could fit in, even with her traditional look. You know, she was someone that could fit in into today's world. So, and also the fact that, well, technically, 
she was kind of like the eye candy of the group. No offense to Velma, but she was kind of like the eye candy of Mystery Incorporated. So, anyway, I know I sound like I'm rambling. I do apologize. Uh, but anyway, the theory goes, basically, the theory is basically based on the fact that, as I said, they were treated as much. Or some fans in their eyes, Daphne and Shaggy were treated as much. And there's a lot of prime examples that show this. I mean, Daphne taking Shaggy and Scooby and Scrappy to her parents' house when she's never done that with Fred up until recently in Mystery Incorporated. But you kind of get the idea. Back then, that never happened. That never, ever happened. So, so for her to do that, and then you have her dancing with Shaggy, and even though Shaggy kind of has a little bit of a goof up with the night helmet or the little visor on the night costume he has falling down on his face and she's giggling you know that it's not that's not the only example the other examples that go along with that are examples like 13 ghost in 13 ghost of scooby-doo after daphne is restored from being a werewolf miraculously she embraces shaggy aggie as you know a couple would embrace but then the other example is them all living in one house. And everybody's, and that right there is what got a lot of people curious, I think, to start thinking and theorizing that there's something there, but that basically Shaggy and Daphne, between that run, were presented as a couple. They were presented as an item. And then you take a look at the shows that would follow, um, even in the soft reboot post reboot versions and there's still evidence there there's still evidence there that some fans feel supports that theory that Hanna Barbera and now even Warner Brothers knows about this whole shaggy Daphne ship and they're pretty much giving you moments here and there that attest to that even Mystery Incorporated gave you a freaking moment even though, because both were under some kind of drug or something like that, it gave you a moment in Mystery Incorporated where they kissed on the lips. Even though they were both under the influence of some kind of drug, you had that moment. And that was unexpected, but it also tells you that the people behind the series knew about the whole Shaggy Daphne thing from back in the day. And then you take a look at the movies. The movies have some moments that fans would point out. Just a whole bunch of stuff. So, the theory about them being an item, back then, during the run of 83 to 87, there's no doubt, there's no doubt that the evidence pretty much, pretty much backs up the fact that these two were an item back during that run. And then, like I, and like I said, you take a look at the current run for the past 15 years, and you do get some moments here and there through the movies, through the various shows that basically, basically um, hint at the fact that, you know, Shaggy, that there was something and probably is still something between Shaggy and Daphne. There is no doubt about that. I mean, there's even an episode in probably one of the more controversial Scooby-Doo Sco Scooby shows they've done re recently called Be Cool Scooby-Doo which is done in almost a Seth MacFarlane like style uh, where basically Daphne has to pretend Shaggy's her boyfriend. Why would she do that when she could just come out and say Fred's her boyfriend? I don't get it. Do you? The point I'm getting at, and again I I'm sorry if I'm sounding like I'm rambling but the point I'm getting at is even nowadays there are hints little easter eggs acknowledgements to that run back to that 83 to 87 run of something being something there between shaggy and and uh and daphne there is no doubt i mean you take a look at the upcoming movie and who are three out of the mystery inc gang who are the three main focuses besides scooby Daphne and Shaggy. So, 
it's going to be really interesting. I will say this, like I've said before, it's going to be interesting as they touch upon any kind of acknowledgement or reference about that time. I mean, I'm wondering if maybe they'll bring up the fact that Scoop, that Shaggy and Daphne shared a house. I'm wondering if they'll bring that up. You know, there's a lot of questions, a lot of questions that we hopefully, hopefully they may reference or answer in some kind of way uh, in the movie. But, again though, you know, is Daphne and Shaggy an item? As of right now, as far as we know, as far as we know, according to Mystery Incorporated, and even the movies that have came before and followed it, the couples go like this. Fred Daphne, Shaggy Velma. That's pretty much it. Um, could things change in the long run? Absolutely. They could change, absolutely. Because like I said, the, the creators of all these various Scooby-Doo shows, from Mystery Incorporated to the upcoming Scooby-Doo and Guess Who the, uh, situation, if that's a real deal, uh, pretty much they know, like I said, they know and they know about the whole Scooby, uh, the whole Shaggy Daphne deal. They know about that. I mean, they're on the internet just as much as we are. So obviously they've had to hear something here and there, or else you wouldn't be getting these references or moments here and there, or these nods and acknowledgments. So they obviously know something, and whether or not they decide to apply that in the future. Uh, with the new show, or whether they decide to apply that and reference it in the upcoming movie, or do it in it, or kind of focus on it, maybe in any kind of any other kind of future movie, uh, it's up to them. You know, it's up to them. But yeah, the the theory about Shaggy and Daphne being an item back between the '83 to '87 run definitely has a lot of evidence to back up the fact that it was a reality, that it was a real deal, that those two were a couple back then. And then you take a look at today and you definitely see a lot of uh, moments from the movies, from uh, from some of the various shows that acknowledge, reference uh, that situation as well. So hopefully Mr. Wrestling, uh, wrestling fan, uh, biggest wrestling Hopefully, Mr. Wrestling big, Wrestling's Biggest Fan, hopefully that answered your question as well as anybody else's question. But the theory about Shaggy and Daphne being an item now, it's kind of up in the air because the main thing is Daphne and Fred and Velma and Shaggy. But the theory of them being an item back during the 83 to 87 one definitely has a lot of evidence to back it up as being real and actually happening. Or something that actually happened and occurred. And then, like I said, you got all the evidence, you got all the hints, nods, Easter eggs, and all that uh, in recent movies and shows that kind of play upon that, or kind of it, tip their hat to it. So, hopefully that answered those questions. I'm sorry if I rambled a little bit, but let me know what you all think down below. Comment if you like. Talk to you all later.